We're live. Now. We're live now. All right, we're live. This is Richie Eddings, and this is the Jesus Movement. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. But before we uh, do that, I want to introduce my guest hosts. First, I on my, let me see, which way? <laughs> it would be on my left when I'm looking at it, all right? On my left is Rachel from Rachel's Ghost. And Rachel, you want to say, say a little bit about what you do on your podcast? Uh, just uh, It's a YouTube channel, Music uh, Centered Richie. And uh, we have a, a group of people come in, uh, people that f collect records and like loving music. We talk, we have a lot of laughs and giggles, and uh, it's, a, it's really a school of life stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's a Wild West ride in many ways. Yeah, it is fun. Roy, it any Roy, Roy snores it well. Roy snores <laughs> it the room well. I've, I, I watched your last one, and they, and they were going at it, those, those two guys. Uh, yes. I don't remember their names now. They were just ripping was, each was other. Was one of them the waxed? Yeah, Rob <laughs> could have been one. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Underneath, we got uh, on the picture, we have my brother Royce from Royce in the House. And I'm going to let him talk about his show, too. Yeah. We've got our YouTube channel, Royce in the House, like my brother said. And uh, we've, we've got multiple playlists. My main playlist is my music based live podcast every Sunday where we talk about music. This week, we covered The Grateful Dead. My younger brother was a co host. And then uh, we, we pick a different topic every week, different band, different genre or something. And we talk about music and, and just interesting stories that took place. You know, we did Laurel Canyon. We've done the iconic Sunset Strip nightclubs and things like that. Coming up, we're going to be covering something similar to the uh, Sunset Strip nightclubs, but on the other end of the coast. But we also have multiple playlists. Why we love the Central Coast, uh, Tours of Famous Places, my Royce Construction play playlist, Royce and Betty Eddings. Navigators Real Estate. We, we've got a bunch of other playlists as well, but I consider the live podcast, the music-based podcast, to be kind of my flag, flagship show. Um, anyway, that's that's what we're doing. Say that three times real fast. Flagship show. Flagship flab show. I can't even say it one time fast. <laughs> it's going to turn out flab, flab, flab shit show. Flab shit show. <laughs> no, anyway, yeah, I urge you all to watch um, Rachel's Ghost and Royce in the House. They're great podcasts and a lot of fun, too. Anyway, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and, and dive in, okay? <laughs> dive right into this, uh, dive this, in. this tablet over here. So if you don't see me, that means I dived into it. Anyway, here we go. I'm just going to read a little bit for, for a few minutes, and then we're going to start on the first gift, okay? Okay. It says, what are the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. These gifts are manifestations of the power and authority given to you by the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish his will on earth or a purpose. I've got several readouts on this, and it, one, the other one says a purpose for you on earth, okay? Okay. As believers, we have an inheritance of power and authority. I like that. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that's John 14, 12 through 14. Therefore, ask for these gifts of the Holy Spirit to be manifest in your life. So you can pray for them. You can ask for them. That's great. Okay, understand these. Under, understand this about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for you to use how you want. That's very important. They have specific purposes. Here it is. I, I didn't know it was in this one. For God's kingdom. They are intended to glorify God by revealing more of who he is and, display, and displaying his sovereignty and power over all things. The purpose of the Spirit's manifestations is to benefit the body of Christ. It's all for the body of Christ. It's all for Jesus. That's what it's all for. And all goes back to that. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit, for the profit of all. OK, and that's in First Corinthians 12, number seven. They are available to all believers distributed by the Holy Spirit according to his will. Now, here's another scripture. But one and the same spirit works all these things disturbing. No, not disturbing, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Like we don't all get all of them. 
you might have one, you, I might have another, and you might have another, but they work together for all of us. Okay. That's just me talking. I mean, I don't know if uh, <laughs> God's word tells us that we should earnestly seek and desire these gifts, not quenching the spirit. Okay. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. First Corinthians 14, 39. Okay. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. I'm going to go down and I'm going to start uh, start into the gifts, okay? Okay. Now, here it says, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, we're going to talk about the first one. This gift of the Holy Spirit is the word of knowledge. This gift of the Holy Spirit is having knowledge about something. You have no ability or means of knowing based on your human intelligence. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Hmm. I, always, I have thoughts on everything all the time. <laughs> okay. That's but, okay. Uh, yeah. No, the word of knowledge. Okay. Word of knowledge. So the first thing comes to me is a woman that uh, is possessed of a spirit walking around following uh, Paul. The apostle Paul is with uh, what now it's, I can't quite remember. It's been a while. I just bought a uh, Royce. I was telling Richie that I just bought a Bible again, and I'm going to go through it. So I'll be much on the uptake. Essentially, what happens is this woman is following them. She's got a, a spirit. She's possessed of a spirit. And she goes, these are men of God coming, uh, preaching the way of salvation. And what happens is Paul or Peter, they rebuke the spirit in her. They have a word of knowledge. And they're able to discern what the problem is. And they take care of business and they cast the spirit out. And the people are angry. The, the locals are angry because she was doing fortune telling and stuff. But they took her gift away. Gift uh -huh. in quotes because is it really. But there was a knowledge. He intuited. He knew that what was happening here was not of just this woman doing her thing. He knew that there was a power behind her. He, was, he right. had knowledge. He was able to perceive, to discern. Okay, I think, I think that goes around. along with. I think that goes along with. Uh, the, I I just went down to a, a different gift. I, I'm not going in order now. It, no. I don't think it matters if I do that, because you brought that up. Let's look at the the discerning of spirits. Okay, that's another gift. Yeah. The, this gift of the Holy Spirit equips the discerner to see evil spirits that are operating in someone's life. The Holy Spirit pulls back the curtains, exposing the evil spirits so that the person can experience a breakthrough from their bondage. Okay, this is really good, Eddie. So, uh, Richie, excuse me, I go read. I'm reading Eddie okay. again. Uh, Richie, so you're right about that. So, so if I'm not right about the first one, I think we're getting more. Well, you know, it's, you can weigh that in. You could actually weigh that in a little bit, you know. Yeah. But I don't, I'm trying to think of a better example of what the word of knowledge is. I know that, like, I okay, let me think about this one. What about Moses? This is an amazing thing. When, when, um, now who's, oh, I'm trying to remember, Stephen. Stephen is being martyred, okay? They are throwing rocks at him. Right. They're killing him. While he's there, he starts getting revelation about what's going on with, with Moses when he kills the uh, Egyptian oh, taskmaster. And what happens is that uh, Moses goes and uh, kills this guy thinking, see, there's nobody knows this, but he has knowledge. He gets kind of revelation, understanding of why Moses did this. He said, because Moses thought by killing him, the Jewish people would see that Moses was caused called to free the uh, the Jewish people from the oppression of the Egyptians to be the way forward in that Red Sea later on and all that came. Right. Of course, he got chased out of town for his trouble. He had to wait 40 years tending sheep with his father-in-law, just <laughs> grinding the days away. And then wow. one day the burning bush appears and says, Moses, I want you to go into Egypt and do the mission because he had Moses discerned that he had this great calling in his life right he Moses is like to, he was like are you sure you got the right person there? <laughs> yeah because but and this is what the change in the man when he's a young guy he's got i've got this gift i can do this i know i'm called i want you people to see that i'm the guy i'm the deliverer i'm the guy right. i'll get you out of here 
I've got yeah. the burden from the Lord but it's not in God's time. So 40 years later, God goes, okay, Moses, let's do this. It's time to go get him. And he goes, get Aaron. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not into yeah. it anymore. He's like 80, anymore. Wasn't he like 80 years old when he started out to do all that after yeah. he talked to God? Yeah. Because it was another 40 years in the wilderness after that. It's amazing how, did, did time go by faster in those days or what? But, well, I I have, <laughs> you know, my former theology, I have theology about everything. I think that sin worked its way out. So at the time of Adam and Eve, that in the day you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, it's not an apple. It's knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat of that fruit is the day you die. They right. died, but they didn't die that day. So no, we just thought, we it, talked about that last time. We didn't get in depth of it, but we yeah. go ahead. So, so what I think, what I mean by this is I, my, 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 you know, there's no way I can be right or I'm, I'm just saying, right. I'm just throwing it out there, but I've always thought, well, maybe they died spiritually immediately at that day. They're dead. Cause That's God what I said. in the garden. Oh, Adam, where are you? It's not like God doesn't know where they are. He knows he wants right. them to go. Oh, well, hi, we were hiding. Oh yeah. Why are you hiding? Well, we had no clothes. We were a little embarrassed. He's, oh, you, who told you were naked? You know, that's right. And, he, and uh, so it, they died spiritually immediately. Then that sin worked out into their soul because then Adam goes, oh, God goes, so uh, what happened here? And he goes, well, it's the woman. She gave me of the fruit to eat. And so, you know, it's her. <laughs> but he already told Adam, you can't eat from that tree. Correct. So yeah, correct. They, blew so it. they blew it so for all us. Yeah, so the death comes in the spirit first, then it works its way out to the soul. So the first guilt trip in history, uh, right. the first, you know, not me, her, it's her fault, not mine. And then and obviously uh, finally, God didn't, didn't, uh, he still took care of him for another 900 and something years, you know. Absolutely. And then so. finally sin worked out to the final uh, constituent part of our humanity, our flesh, spirit, soul, body. That's right. the tripartite constitution of human being. And so death finally worked out from spirit, soul to body. So going back to Stephen as these, these rocks are being thrown at him and stuff, I think it was like a word of knowledge that he had. He got revelation about what was going on with Moses. That Because nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that Moses thought by doing the deed and killing the guy that he was going to, everybody would recognize his good, go, you know, that he's the chosen one. No, not from doing that. Of course not. It's a revelation that Stephen got. No, he only had this through revelation. It was like right. a, a word of knowledge, so to speak, about what was going on at that time. Because nowhere in the Old this. Testament does it explain it that way. Do you have any thoughts on that, Royce, before I read this thing? No, no, go ahead. Let me let me show you this, Rachel. Uh what because I'm getting back to where I said you could weigh in what those two gifts. Um, of knowledge and discernment. The, now, the other definition I have that goes along with it is the gift of knowledge, the gift to comprehensively understand a spiritual issue or circumstance. So that kind of, that one kind of goes in on that. That, what does I do. fit. that does fit, yeah. I think it does. Okay, what I do. Oh. <sighs> okay, I got it. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I had a bunch of stuff coming up. Okay, oh, are let's you, move on. Are you looking on the screen, uh, Richie, to get the word? I was messing around down here, and I got on my side where it has all the banners and brands and all this stuff. Yeah. I hit something, and it, it it gave me a bunch of options over here, and I, I got paranoid. Yeah. So Because if I hit one of those, it, then I might be – More than just... once I've touched my keyboard and something <laughs> happened. I, I keep, like, right. pushing it away from myself to try to avoid that. I'm not, in, I'm not really – that great to figure stuff out quick. So I like, I might get in deep water if I do that, you know? Okay. Let's look at, uh, let's look at um, wisdom next. Okay. We didn't do that yet. Right. I don't think so. No. Okay. Wisdom. The gift of the Holy spirit works with the word of knowledge. Again, here we go again. It gives you the ability and understanding of how to apply the word of knowledge. Now let me read the other one before we go on. Okay, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Okay. It should be the second one. And uh, oh, here. The gift to make choices and give leadership that is according to God's will. Okay. I'd, I'd be, if I was like in, in, in a platoon or something, right? 
I sure would want some leader up here that had some good wisdom. Oh, you yeah. Know? I mean, <laughs> to make some good decisions and good choices for us, Absolutely. maybe even save our lives. That's like a in, the, in the world kind of a view, but I'm just saying, you know. But uh, is that an easy one or is every, uh, does anybody have anything to say about that? Just like you, Royce, when you're on the job, right? Yeah, yeah. And you got all these things going on. Yeah, right? a, lot, a lot of things going on, yeah. And everybody's counting on you. Yeah, everybody's counting on me. Yeah, we're all counting. We're all counting on each other, really. But yeah, yeah. that's true. But you know, you the man. Looking out for each, you know, out for each other. Yeah, I, I have the I have the main responsibility. That's for sure. Right. Oh, here's uh, Nick Pantazi. Pantasy. Pantasy. Hey, how, you how, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. We how love him. He's a super good guy. You know, can I ask you guys a quick question off subject? I cannot say anything in the chat. Now, Rachel, you earlier made a comment in the chat. And it seems like every time I go on somebody's show, um, one time I was even in a live chat with StreamYard, and they were like, "Well, hey, you're just a guest. You're not a you're not a host, so you can't you can't chat with everybody. You can only go to a private chat." So anyway, I was just trying to I was just wondering why can you go in the chat, Rachel, and I can't? That's oh, you can't. You have to do it in YouTube. Okay. So you won't be able to do it here in right. Um, okay. In StreamYard, but you'll be able to do so if you open up YouTube, but just make sure the volume on YouTube is completely shut down because StreamYard and YouTube both perform the same function. You'll get an echo effect. You get the echo. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've we experienced that. I go to YouTube <laughs> and what do I do at YouTube to give me access to the chat in StreamYard? Okay. So, so uh, one reflects there with a delay. So I'll type something now. I'll go, hi, Royce. Sorry to interrupt, but we'll, we'll, I'll just do this. Well, I'm the, no, one, that's that, okay. I'm the one that interrupted. It's so it's now okay. I just I, there's a slight delay here in the stream yard, but there it is. Hi Royce, I typed it and it shows up. Okay. But so I don't, even, I don't even have a play, I don't even have a place to type. Yeah, you, it's part of your now. Are you in front of your laptop? No, my desktop. Or desktop computer? Yes. Then make sure that you're at the bottom of YouTube. You'll see how to display the screen. Make sure to, you're using the default view to to show the screen. When I'm in YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube at the bottom, you'll see okay. of your YouTube screen, there's three windows where you can see different sizes of the screen. Make it a full page, make it uh, long, like a movie theater type cinematic, okay. or the default view. You want the default view, and then the text will show up to the uh, right of the, your, your monitor on the right-hand side. Okay. So hopefully that'll be there. We'll do. We'll yeah. work through this. You and me. If you take some time and and come over to my stream one day, and I'll walk. I'll take all the time in the world to do this. Okay. With, yeah. We we'll okay. Yeah. That sounds great. If, if that sounds great. Easy, yeah. I'll yeah. do that definitely. Okay. Now let's go to prophecy. Is a good one, and I think that a lot of people get this one confused. You know, with with fortune telling and things like that. You know. They don't they don't realize a prophecy is is strictly a God thing. You know, it's not somebody with a crystal ball or it's not, a, a you know, somebody reading the stars or anything like that. And, and that's prophecy. The gifts of prophecy. This gift of the Holy Spirit is one that scripture says to to especially desire. This gift is a direct word from the Lord that has been given to someone else to edify and build them up. Fantastic. I love yeah. it. Strictly, strictly from the Lord. That's it. There's no, that's where it comes from. And that's what you, you know, you know, you, we all know about the prophets in the, in, in the Bible. Right. Anyway, the gift of faith. I like this one too. I mean, it's heavy duty. This gift of the Holy Spirit grows as we walk with the Lord. And I'm going through that right now. You know, it's, it's my faith. Faith is so much stronger than it was six years ago when I started really, getting into being a Christian, it's like, I don't, it's never going to go away now. I know that, but uh, it's, it's a walk. And, uh, and I think what people, when, when they have, they have a problem taking the plunge and accepting Jesus and stuff, they think they got to just, bam, they're going to turn into this perfect person overnight. No, but they're not going to. It takes no. time and you never make it to being perfect. No, you never you make it. 
Not on this side of the great divide, no. (laughs) It takes time and you never make it. But you don't don't have this goal of making it to be perfect when you're walking with God. You don't have that You you just have to do the best you can. You You do the best you can. You, yeah. you 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 get him in your get him in your life get him in your heart, and then you see how it works from the inside out. After that, that's what see, I think. My challenge for me as a personality is I it, I have knowledge like because I've studied the Bible a lot and right. I haven't done it recently. Like I said, I'm just coming back after a long time off. But when you mention wisdom, I got a story. I got it. I I can give you a story. You yeah. mentioned faith. I go, okay, I know what that's about. If you mention prophecy, I get Bible stories coming in the word. <laughs> right. getting, because what am I, because it's all wrapped up with my own unique story and my uh, uh, conversion story and what I ask God. I, You know, uh, the great story of uh, David and um, uh, Solomon. Solomon asked God, he goes, so God asked Solomon. God is no respecter of persons. So if God and he, he's not, you know, he doesn't play favorites, right? He loves his children equally. If you do the thing that's required, draw an eye unto me, I'll draw an eye unto you. So mm-hmm. Richie, if you draw an eye to God, he draws an eye to you. If Royce, it doesn't mean that he draw, I, you know, that there's going to be any difference between us or favoritism on that. If we draw an eye, the promise is he'll draw an eye. So he goes to Solomon, ask me anything and I'll give it to you. What do you want? I believe that God gives, there's that moment for Royce, for you, Richie, and for me and every believer where we can go to God and God says, what do you want? I'll give it to you. Because as long as we don't use it to consume it upon our own lust, our own ego, our own selfish desires, as you said earlier, Richie, as long as we do it right, then we get it. So I didn't understand the King James Bible that my dad had as a kid. I, my, the word to me was like the parable of the of the ravens of the crows, where the seed falls on the hard rock, and before it can take it, so root and grow and and produce good fruit in my life, I forget what it was. It would go in one ear, now, and I had no framework or nothing. And I said, God, I want to understand the King James Bible. Let me understand the these. Uh, I want to understand it. And God went, okay, right. yeah. and I read it, and I understood, it, and revelation came understanding. I knew I had a gift. There's a guy came up from California. I said, what's my gift? I asked him, what's my gift? What do you think my gift is to the body? What do I do? He goes, you have a, he goes, I have a word for you. It's in Nehemiah 9.8. I believe it was a 9.8. And it was, they taught from the book of the law of God distinctly and caused them to understand the meaning of it, uh, that they rightly divided the word of truth. Right. And so this is what it was. Not only do I teach, but I, but I explain what the Bible means and how it, why it right. works the way, it, et cetera. I can yeah. break it down and apart. But I this love is the King James I version. never, uh, Richie, I never had this ability before I became a Christian. This only came after. I couldn't even understand it. It's a complete miracle. All glory goes. It's not me. It's, I don't yeah. believe it's me. I just think I have a quick mind. I have, yeah, yeah. Well, I like I said, we get it. We, if we each get a different gift, it works together for all of us. So, yes. Yeah. Is, I mean, all of us believers, and that, and that's the drag about it. I mean, it's not a drag, but uh, I just keep I keep not understanding why people aren't just you know knocking each other over to get to Jesus these days. You well, know, it's, it's just, well, it's just <laughs> you know what I mean. If that's the everything that's going well, on, I mean, yeah. gosh, just shed well, some light in the world. You you have the revelation. So for you, you the lights are on and you see it as as plain as day. But if people can't see, then it, it, you're you're talking to blind people. They can't see. I know. I mean, but I still it still bugs me why, you know, they a lot of people are they they just think, well, I just got it all together, man. I don't need nothing else, right? It's just oh like, man, yeah. I'm just I don't need them. I, I've got I'm I got it. I'm making a lot of money. I'm happy. I love my business, my job. You know, my family's cool right now, and I just don't need God. You know, what what can he do for me? You know, that kind of an attitude. I I don't, yeah. And you know what? I don't think I've ever had that attitude. <laughs> I heard, I've always I've always seemed like I needed something else. Mm-hmm. Is, your, uh, is your burden more for the body, uh, believers, or is your burden more for the unsaved, the people that don't know uh, Christ in their life? My what? 
Is my what? Is your that? burden? You see, burden, you get a burden, burden okay. like you get you get this uh, zeal to say, I want to, I want to labor. It's more for mine's more for the unsaved. Unsaved is where my burden is more for. Yeah, I think, ah, I think, I think that's that's it would get most get saved. People. Yeah, you know. So evangelism, that's the essential of bringing people to the Lord, you know? That's it. That's 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 what my whole thing's about. A little yeah. spark. If I can get a little spark of interest and somebody starts getting into yeah. it and saying, well, I don't quite understand this, so I need more help. And then, then maybe they call a friend that they know is a believer. And then maybe the friend takes them to church. And then, you know, one thing after another, you know? Yeah, I was it's never, that actually. was never, I'm, I can do it. We all do is, you know, the Bible commands us to do the work of an evangelist, but not everyone is quote an evangelist. Absolutely. So I've never been really effective with uh, people that aren't Christian. It's not my gift. It's, it's not my real burden. I go, oh, you want to go to hell? That's your business. You know, are you, <laughs> well, it's, are you don't it's, that's, that's what I, that's what I'm hoping for mostly is just to bring him to the Lord and, 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 and let, yeah, let, and him, apart from let Jesus that, save them. I'm not really, I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. All I'm doing is, is this show. And then I do, I put, I do pre-record and I put some Christian songs on I, Those are, those are short, but they're not shorts. Mm -hmm. You know, like the longest one is about 10 minutes. The shortest one is, is five minutes, but I know what you're saying. When you say shorts, you're talking about seconds. And give yeah, them, yeah, just give them something, things, yeah. give them, and strike an interest that way. And I'm definitely going to do that. I, I think it's a, a great idea. No, I think it's a great idea too. I mean, technically, a short is a minute and under, sixty yeah, seconds right. and under. That's right. But you're, I've been but you're watching shorts lately because I've been I've been yeah. contemplating it, especially after I talked to one of my my step grandkid. He's I I'm it's my son's girlfriend's kid. He's twelve years old. It's in the seventh grade, and he's got that stuff down pat. Yeah, editing, putting stuff on, and you know he's just he's just on his phone, just going crazy. You know, bam, 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 bam. Here's what you have to do: how's you how to edit, and he's starting to cut these things out and shows me how to put them in. And it, you know, it doesn't look that difficult. But well, you know, my granddaughter, my granddaughter's had a um, what is it, a TikTok show? I think since she's been about <laughs> five years old, where Presley unboxes presents. You know, and she has a huge following. Thousands oh, yeah. of people Amazing. watch. It had to be popular, yeah. Five years old, that's something else, man. You got five year olds that are better than me on the computers and stuff. <laughs> hey, you better know, I'm happy, I'm happy for them. We never had that kind of training when we were in elementary school, you know. Yeah, nothing. Then they just yeah. went through COVID where they all had to stay home and do their stuff on computer. I mean, right. You learn stuff like that. But that was depressing for the kids, though, too. They need, yeah, they it was, it was. They got into practice. other things more than their lessons, probably. But. Yeah. Okay, let's go to healing, gift, the gifts of healing. There are actually different kinds of healings that the spirit will do. Notice that the scripture says gifts, plural. These gifts equip you in various ways to access healing for yourself or to be anointed or to be an anointed vessel that will heal others. That's pretty neat. You know, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Now, some people believe in their in their churches. What are you doing here? My dog's in here. You better not be wanting to go outside. Okay, sorry. <laughs> here, come here. We'll get him up here for a second. This is Peppy. Hi, Peppy. You hear that? They're, they're looking at you. His name is Peppy. He has all kinds of different names. He's got pepperoni. He's got <laughs> Peppy's Pizza Delivers. Uh all kinds of stuff. What a gift those little I love dogs. <laughs> oh, this is we this have... is this he has been my he's been my best friend for a long time now. He's the only one I can smack around and get away with it, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay, get down, Peppy. Go go see Donovan. He'll take you outside. Go get Donovan. He'll go get him too. That dog has learned so much just by hanging out with him. It's like amazing. I don't really teach him stuff. He just picks it up because it's so much oh, repetition. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now here's here's miracles now. We were talking about miracles. This is another gift. This gift of the Holy Spirit is depicted throughout the Bible, from Moses parting the Red Sea to Jesus feeding 5,000 people. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, he is still in the business of working miracles. So the miracles haven't stopped. They never stop. Some churches you go to say, some I mean, it's not all. Some of them say, "Oh, there's no more miracles, and there's you can't pray for healing anymore, and all this stuff." It clearly says in more than one place in the Bible that all this stuff is still going on. 
And I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it happen. <laughs> oh, no. Donovan? Well, let me, let me ask a question. We're talking yeah. about Moses' part in the Red Sea right now. And, right. I, and I've seen The Ten Commandments. It's a great movie. And, uh, in fact, I want to do a, um, a travel vlog about the making of the first Ten Commandments, which was a silent movie, right out here on the Guadalupe Dunes near where I live. And the set was so big. I mean, there was massive structures they built right out on the sand on the beach that they weren't going to take them down. So they just dug big holes on the beach and shoved everything in and covered it up. There's actually kind of a debris field there right now. Anyway, um, now I have read a lot of different things. You know, Betty and I will get in conversations. We'll start Googling things out of the Bible and stuff like that and discussing it. And um, I have read stories where the party of the Red Sea, that the Red Sea actually kind of kind of opens up on its own um, certain conditions, certain times of the year, and things of, of that nature. nature. Richie, who is that? That's Bobby, Bobby Simmons. Okay. And that Moses being from that area kind of was familiar with that. And so this was one of those kind of a natural phenomenon where it just kind of just opens up for a brief period of time. Now, have you guys heard anything like that? I haven't. No. Okay. I didn't catch that last line. Oh, no. What, what I was saying was um, I've read stories where mm -hmm. uh, the parting of the Red Sea could have could have happened because that that area where and Moses was from that area and was familiar with this happening. There were times when the sea would part in a certain location. I don't, I'm not, I know I'm not describing it quite right. I, I understand what you're saying. It yeah. with the tides at a certain time of year, and there might be a few times where it happens a year or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so you got a supernatural explanation for a natural phenomenon. Right, right. Is exactly yeah. what that does. That's what I'm saying, yeah. But within the context of Scripture, no, it's, it's, it's an out-and-out, out, true and blue, pure. You see, this is the thing, right? it's crazy but only if you got the eyes to see if you if you if you're woken awakened to the supernatural power of god then it becomes the world's different everything's different but you have Everything's to walk different. in it obviously for this thing to be maintained and for power to flow through you because you can quench the spirit you can block the spirit there can be all sorts yeah. of different things but i i my interpretation is god says I'm parting the seas for you. I'm making a way where there is no way supernaturally. Well, you can yeah, yeah. The horse and the there's rider. A of, there's a lot of explanations of, of miracles because people just don't want to believe that it actually happened. What, what, that's that, that's, yeah, like that's saying, exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. I mean, I there's read. All the uh, scientists, they want a lot of scientists that are having a hard time believing there's a, there's a great creator like God that created everything. He's the great scientist, the great physician, the great, what the great, you can go on down the list. And there's yeah. a lot of people that just don't have, I don't know if it's, well, it's one of the gifts, faith, <laughs> right? Oh, that, yeah. That, yeah, the whole thing is faith based. I mean, faith in, in believing something yeah. you can't see, but you can right. see it all around you every day. If you want to look we at preach. it that way. Yeah, we preach Christ crucified. So a stumbling block to the Jews because they seek a sign and an offense to the Greeks because they seek knowledge is the foolishness. We preach the foolishness of the cross. It's absolute. This is foolishness. To, so they cannot understand it because it, that you have to be spiritually awakened in order to seek. You know, yeah, and and I, just, you, I just throw these things go, out. OK, I got it now. I just throw yeah. these things out because I find them interesting when I come across them. Like I, I was, they are I was, definitely I interesting. Yeah. I was I was reading, you know, that some of these like religious scholars that were Christians or claimed to be Christians anyway, mm -hmm. were saying that it was like, um, you know, they were saying like parts of the Bible need to be updated to be more believable. And let me explain what I'm trying to say. <laughs> only only because. Um, DNA proves that everybody couldn't have come from Adam, Adam and Eve. It, it, they, it, they're just saying it's like impossible. So the, what they know, I'm, I'm good on DNA. Know. Now I have some knowledge about DNA, why DNA, mitochondrial DNA. I've studied all this, haplogroups. Okay. groups. Uh, and so uh, you, they're starting to work now that there may have been various hominid uh, uh, species and that humanity intermingled with Cro-Magnon 
so that the Europeans have something like 3%, 2 to 3%, Neanderthal. Then you got Denisovians, Denosivians. Uh, I've, read, I've, read that, I've read that too. I've read that too, you know. Yeah, and you got so you got these small uh, Homo erectus. Right. With my show, I'd be going no sex at this point. <laughs> Homo erectus. And, uh, you know, <coughs> so they've got different things, but they don't know. This is the problem is, is they, they think they know. But the think point is, is that there, there's a co common thread of humanity through everybody. That the Otherwise, species, they can't uh, uh, procreate. If You know, you can't get a dog and cat to procreate because they're different species. So you That's still within thing, species too. still right. can procreate. That's another thing. Them. Like, look how many – now, now – Look how many dogs and cats, look how many dogs there are. Okay. I mean, it's almost hard to believe that, uh, it's harder to believe that, that, uh, these dogs came out of like just a couple of the dogs, wolf. all the yeah, different sizes, wolf, different, yeah. different, what, what do you call it? different kinds of dogs, right? Like from a Shih Tzu yeah. to a Great Dane, right? Yeah. It's hard to believe that when God says he created the animals, and what about something after their and to to multiply after their own kind? Yes. Okay. Good. So does that mean their own somehow kind? Of they, somehow they just multiplied into all these different kinds? No. It's yeah, well, you know, the history. That's, 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 this is an interesting topic because I've I've read where you know reading about the ark and the animals. I'm like, how in the, how in the how in the hell, right? <laughs> how could they have put all these different species? You know, different species of dogs and. Yeah. Well, all these other animals, but yeah. and and what was explained in the article that I was reading was that uh, God gave these animals the ability to um, not morph. That's the wrong way of putting it, but uh, to just to just breed and have different different uh, offshoots. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, this we know this we know this because they have it. What now because of science, we now understand that the dog, the canine has a very malleable gene and you can breed the dog so you can make a schnauzer with a certain nose you can break the pugs they breeded the pugs and they're always snorting and that sort of thing yeah. because it's a, a man-made manipulation you get the same dog that's got the characteristic you breed that you characteristic keep breeding again, those together yeah and you breed it out and so this is why you can make anything and it takes i forget the amount but it's actually been measured about how many generations it takes to do and you can look likely on youtube i saw this i think in a different medium a, on a different platform but they took a fox and they actually bred foxes over a number of generations and bred uh, a dog more dog-like uh fox because they took characteristics focusing on these characteristics yeah focus uh, on and if you get because a, the way um, the canine was made they they were capable of doing that right yes. yeah yeah because they're in their chemistry in their chemistry for, but yeah uh, you know it's kind of like when something doesn't quite come out right they have the ability it has a malleable morphology that okay. allows it to be changed and it's a wow. certain gene that they possess that allows that to occur now that makes sense and being that dog what they only take like seven weeks to have puppies or something yeah much so, quicker gestation period than what yeah. we have so that 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 makes more sense because you don't have like if you take elephants or something they don't have all different kinds of elephants right so see, they weren't made up that way yeah and see I, with me with certain certain people look for an objection to the faith just to you know and then and that person is not going to convert that person's not ready you know we again we preach Christ uh, crucified it's foolishness the whole thing's foolish oh the earth is this that. You know, what about life on other planets? I say, you can't even clean up your room, as, you know, Jordan Peterson <laughs> might say. Right. You aren't even clean up your room. You're worried about life on other planets. You know, give me a break. <laughs> Eventually, you get to a point, and most people, it works this way, I think. You know, I'm going to be 65 coming up in uh, February here. So, you know, it's not like I'm new to the game, this human condition. <laughs> And you find that sometimes you get to a breaking point in your own life. Whatever I'm doing isn't working. I'm going to go with whatever I'm intuiting as the way yeah. to go. And for me, that was Christianity. But I rejected Christianity outright first with my intellect because I go wooden benches and stained glass windows. These are purely 
European artifacts born through the historic process. What about the poor guy in Africa that doesn't have that? What about the poor yeah. lady in China that right. never had any of these influences? But God was there in spite of it, not because of it. And when I got, and it took me so long to get on my knees. I was so proud in myself. But I finally, the hardest thing was I got on my knees. I said, I'm wrong. You're right. What do you want me to do? And I'll do it. And I knew intuitively most of it. Okay, smoking, I will get rid of it. Because I knew it's not good for me. Get rid of it. I had a case right. of beer with me, a drink in. Okay, that's <laughs> got to go. And it was a complete and full repentance. And of course, over the years, as adversity came in trials and tribulation, then I I fall away. I don't I don't stop believing forever for even one iota. But it's just like God, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do my thing because whatever you're wanting for me hasn't worked out. Right. I'm just going to tend sheep with yeah. Jethro, you know, and, well, and do that. I, I, I understand what you're opinion. saying. Uh, as far as uh, I keep wondering, uh, what am I supposed to be doing? Right. I mean, I started this this show. And start start trying to bring people to get saved. That's my whole thing, and I say that on a lot of them. I say that's my whole thing right there. And uh, then I then I get bummed out about it, and I say oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing it anymore. And I we, we and Royce made kind of a joke out of that because of the Godfather, right? Here I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell I'm not kind of say it again. Every time I every time I try to get out, he pulls me oh, back in. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and so and I I've been going through this. I'll skip a week or something and I'll say, man, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because I'm not that knowledgeable and I'm not, according to me, I'm not that, you know, I haven't even read the whole Bible. I've, I've, I've listened to the whole Bible and I've read a lot of it, mm -hmm. but, but I, but I, and I still study it, but I'm not like, it's not in my hand all day long or nothing like that, you know? So I'm just thinking, uh, uh Oh, I lost my, Oh, I got it back. Oh, thank well, you. I'll, I will tell you, you've learned, You've come a long ways in the time that you've been doing your show. Has it has it been a I can, I can really really see a difference? Absolutely. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, you're getting a lot lot better. You know, I mean, not that you were ever bad, but you're getting better. Well, good. Well, I, mean, I should. I, if I'm not, then if you're saying I've got, I'm going downhill, I'd quit tomorrow. You know. I <laughs> I think as people that you when you love something when you know and in this case is the love of the Lord you want to be obedient want. You want to please what what how can I please you? Whatever it'll take to please you. I want to please. And so the thing is, is that you know it's so important to be led of the spirit <coughs> that you have that that we move on a principle in the Garden of Eden. There were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Two trees. You can choose life, or you can choose just knowledge, carnal knowledge. Oh, this is this is how wheat is yeah. uh, distributed in a vortex. You know, you, so you can get this kind of knowledge, but you lose life in the process. You got a choice. And as Christians, but you're given the Holy Spirit. The Spirit indwells you, empowers you. You, If you live in the Spirit, the, the Bible uh, encourages us to also walk in the Spirit. And in right. walking through the Spirit, you've got that Spirit of life, and then you release that Spirit into your life and affecting the people in out and around you. And you, know, you, really, spirit, you really um, notice it too. I've really noticed it too. You know, I've really noticed it from being a Christian, being saved and, and having the Holy spirit in me, you know, and, and sometimes I pray to get filled up. Sometimes I pray for utterance before I do my show. Cause good. most of the time I'm not prepared. I just got a few thoughts in my mind and, and maybe a few things I want to talk about. Yeah. But I'm not really uh, sitting here with a, with a book of notes or nothing like that. Yeah. I pray well, to God. Know, we, we, to well, you help. know, Rachel, like like Richie and I, for example, neither one of our parents ever went to church. My mother was a Italian New York Catholic, but mm -hmm. she divorced her first husband before she married our father, and they kicked her out of the Catholic Church. And uh, later on, when they started lo losing too many of their members, because you know, fifty percent of the population was divorcing. Right. They changed the rules and they invited mm -hmm. her back in. And she said, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not going back. I wasn't good enough for you then. You're not good enough for me now. Yeah. But she never went back. But later in life, I mean, long after we'd left home and stuff, she started with some of her lady friends going to some Christian churches and things like that. But my father never went to church, but we had uncles that were ministers. You know, our yeah. uncle yeah. Howard, 
uh, um, you know, our uncle, uh, we call him Tex, you know, Lou Plug. and Tex, Lou and Pug. He was a used yeah. car salesman, too. Yeah, yeah he was a used car life. salesman. He had a little yeah. church over in Wasco. And yeah. you know, it was like an hour and a half drive for me, and he used to invite me to come on over. <laughs> See, I mean, you know, it's discernment, it's life. I, I'm, I watch. I mean, we're in this world, right? I'm watching. You know, you think yeah. little children, you've heard that Antichrist shall come and is already in this world. Well, yeah. look for Antichrist. It's not just some guy. It's you know, some entity. It's the God of this world that's working stuff in our time. Yeah. We are in a, an amazing, an amazing period of time. And that well, I, I, somewhere in the history yeah. in my life did I ever think that the freedoms and 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 uh, absolute amazing life that I've been given is being jeopardized now by people with powers far beyond my ability. You know, the leaders yes. of this world, the politicians yes. that are making yes. these decisions. Oh, you're, this is how it works now. Oh, okay. We're taxing right. for this now. Oh, okay. Well, I, I can, I, can I say no? You can, but you're still going to have yes. to pay. You know? They have no business. They have no business making some of these decisions for us. They have no I heard an interesting thing, Richie, is that in times past, God has always allowed humanity to do what it does. And then there comes a time where God says, brakes are on, not going to happen <laughs> right. anymore. I'm right. interceding now. I am interceding now. And, uh, and so, oh, go that's ahead. Why, that's why if we can, as much light as we can get turned on in the world, the better chance we have of the of, of us, you know, even yeah, existing. But again, you know, to, to quote my buddy Wax, but again, what? Again, it's uh, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. To wow. everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And the problem is humans, like Moses, we want to go kill the Egyptians. So everybody goes, look at this evil taskmaster beating our people, uh, whipping them, treating them horribly. Uh, and now by doing this, everyone will know that I'm the chosen one. I am your deliverer. I am Moses. I will draw you out. I will bring my people forth. But they don't get it. Nobody says it. Who the hell are you? You know, get out of here. You know, you're going to get us all killed. You crazy wackle. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna now the, the next one, number eight. We're almost we're almost through the gifts. This gift of the Holy Spirit. This is different kinds of tongues. Yeah. This is a controversial subject, especially in the uh, what do you call them, the charismatic churches. Yeah, charismatic Pentecostals. The Pentecostals were. They kind don't. Of the first. They. I don't think any of them really got this. This is my own opinion because yeah. I study. I've been studying this tongues thing off and on for a while because I just don't feel right about. I even tried to get into tongues and and a la shala bala shala bala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought I was really doing something. And I I talked to some people. Oh, you gotta you gotta work at it. You gotta practice at it. See, I don't believe that. I, I agree. believe that it's gotta I be agree. from the spirit. Yeah, to make you do whatever <laughs> is coming out of your mouth. Donovan, can you get I, You know, all I can tell you, Richie, is my own testimony. I don't have that gift, you know, but I'll tell you something. When I was seeking God with all my heart, once upon a time, you know, and now I'm kind of in this understanding. God, I'm always God conscious all the time, all the time. You can't go back, you know, if Calvinism versus Armenianism. You can't, uh, you can't be unborn. If you're born again, you're born right. again, no matter what happens in your life. Because of, you know, you may sin, you may fall, you may make all sorts of horrible decisions, but God stands with you. It's a wonderful saving grace. Thank God. Thank God. It's the okay. blood of Jesus. It's not anything to do with us. It's the righteousness of God. Anyway. Well, the way I'm so, understanding, when the way I'm ahead, understanding right. this, uh, the gift of tongues is gift to speak other languages, to go spread the good news of Jesus. Or God, okay? Yes. Okay, but the, to, to speak gibberish like that, that spirit-led, yeah. you're speaking mysteries into the well, spirit. There's, yeah, there's two types. There's two types of glossolalia is a yeah. Greek word for the thing. So you do have the where the men heard them on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the tongues of flame out right. the street to go. And every man, these men are not drunk, as you think, but they are filled with the spirit of God, yada, yada. That's and so example. everybody hears them speak in their own tongue. Now there's that. But there's also this tongues where you speak. He that speaks in tongues 
edifies himself. So how is it edifying yourself if you're speaking in tongues uh, in a way that you will understand? In other words, there's two different types. And I'll let Richie get back because we have to dog control. <laughs> but yeah. I, I just want to share briefly this story that I have. And I've shared it before, but I, I just, this is my own personal testimony, my encounter with it. As I was seeking God, I went everywhere, went to an Anglican church. I didn't dig it. It wasn't me. I didn't understand the, what the hell they were doing. But I went to a charismatic non-denominational church. They had an overhead projector, the lyrics, everything for the song, sing song. I got it. Oh, yeah. I recognized the format. A girl was singing in tongues at the, in the most beautiful way. Everybody's doing this. First time I'd ever heard of it. I don't know. I, haven't, I have no cultural I've reference. I've seen it before. Yeah, I don't I've even seen. understand what the hell she's doing. But I'm in there, and I'm following hard, hard, hard after God. And I am obedient beyond obedience. Unbelievable. I'm throwing it all in. Anyway, I'm in church. I'm holding hands with the pastor, too. We had a team pastor. We got a wife on either side of me of the multiple pastors we had. So I got, you know, two little ladies. We're holding our hands up, you know, like you see them do. And I'm like, okay, well, this is weird. I don't do this. But, okay, I'm in. I'm, a, I'm game. I, you know, I don't right. say any harm in it. Whatever. I'll, I'm in. When in Rome. Okay. So I'm doing the thing. And this girl, everybody's singing and, and singing. And then at the end, everybody starts singing. And, and, and it's in a, in a, in a crowd uh, of voices all singing. And then they're starting to murmur, mumble in this tongue stuff. And one, then everybody subsided. But one girl, her voice rose above everybody else's voice. And she was singing. And as she was singing in my stomach, as my hands are on, I'm going, what the hell is going on? And my stomach is bubbling. It's going bubble, 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 bubble. I'm literally looking down at my stomach. Goes, oh, what's this about? Bubble, 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 bubble. And it's going up and up and up and up. Gets into my throat. I know oh, no. it sounds crazy. And I start, I'm just shaking, rocking. And it's going to come out probably maybe in some sort of tongue-like manifestation, gibberish, I don't know, but it's going, and I'm going, uh, and and, and it's, it won't come out, and I'm just rocking, and I go, what is going on? And my mind is trying to rationalize what's going on. Two young girls, wow. about 14 years old, are sitting a couple of rows ahead of me. I said, God, this is all fun and games, but now I'm starting to feel like a complete idiot. As these two young girls, I was like 19 or so, these 14-year-olds are looking at me like I'm some nut. <laughs> and I said, uh, so can you make this, stop this? Can you please, you know, now? And it subsided, right? I was wow. very emotional after. And I was crying and I, I was laughing. I felt cleaner than I'd ever felt in my life. And the pastor, I remember the pastor's wife leaning, leaning down because I'm kind of hunkered over at this point. Weakened, like just drained. This is an amazing phenomenon. This is a metaphysical, a physical encounter with the metaphysics is just crazy and she said are you all right and all i could say was scrooge spirits christmas and then in an instant i knew what was happening i had words and a vocabulary and a framework to understand what the hell had happened that after two years of hard seeking after god and truth and and spiritual reality that god met me he who has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father, and I shall love him, and I shall manifest myself to him. God will reveal. And so God revealed that day. Three days later, I'm reading uh, John 7, 38, 39. I'm reading my Bible dutifully. And, uh, and I come across that passage. It says, uh, it says um, uh, that uh, whosoever believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which should be given to those that believe on his name. And I went, oh, wow. I go, I called it bubbly water, but it's living water. And as soon as I did that, my stomach went bubble, bubble again. Well, and that's that cool. experience, yeah. I believe, Richie, anchored me because of all the trials and tribulations in my life that I've had. I mean, for the love of God, I'm a transsexual, right? Try and deal with that. And so to, to, to have that anchor after everything you've been through, after the great falling away um, 
but never entirely. You know, even even it's amazing how how good yeah. and faithful God is, even when we aren't. And so I do believe that the gift can manifest because, but we shouldn't focus on it. We shouldn't focus. We everything is always. Well, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. It can it can the spirit can get so strong, it can manifest into that you're really not in control of what you're saying. But, uh, but then it doesn't when, but so that's okay. If the end happens. result, the end result, what we want is that the fruits of the spirit, love, patience, right. you know, long sufferings part of it, uh, you know, that we're able to go through and bear the trials and the afflictions of this life right. in a world that does not understand in a world that doesn't see not to be upset by it or put off by it, but to persevere. Our guy, our hero, the whole main focus, the crux, pardon the pun, of our faith gets crucified. Your guy got killed. Yeah. Your guy's a pan anyway. You're, you know, that's Satan. Yeah. I'm still talking. You know what I was saying. What, what, what I'm, what I was trying to say about it is that uh, what, what's not okay is the groups getting together and 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 just getting in like a circle in there and they're all speaking in tongues. Nobody understands what any, the right. other person is saying. Nobody's yeah. interpreting it. It's it's just all made up by those individuals. Yeah. And they're, the Apostle going, Paul, the that's, Apostle that's Paul, not okay. With the nobody Apostle knows what's Paul going on. The yeah. Corinthians for that very thing. I went to I went to I was going to a weekly tongues thing at a church I was going to, right? Well, yeah. that's not what it was. It was a Wednesday night prayer night, but yeah. they had the tongue section where we we pray and then we everybody would go into a tongues thing like ten or twelve of us right fourteen yeah. whatever, and they'd all and it got really loud and really high voiced yeah. and and all those people are going at it. I kind of kept mine down and stuff, but I was trying. <laughs> I was making it up. <laughs> yeah, right? and so they, 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 everybody yeah. was making it up. Then afterwards, they would go around to each other. The pastor would go around and say, "Well, did you get anything out of that?" go around to each person did you get anything out of that was anything happening to you during that and see that's that wasn't okay to me you're correct you know, i thought it was a, a bunch of crap and that's what steered you me away from it. that steered me away from it and i don't believe that you have to do this gibberish stuff that you make up and work on on your own to be closer to god absolutely correct no, I I couldn't agree more. Yeah, we're all in agreement here. We have, they, but they'll argue they'll argue you right down that you're not close to God unless you're No, 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 because you're fetishing. Yeah. You're you're making a fetish out of out of a specific thing. I mean, the Jewish people had that whole problem with the Ark of the Covenant. We got the Ark. Every time we get the Ark, we win the battle. Where's right. the Ark? Get the Ark. We're going to kick some Philistine butt here. We get the Ark. <laughs> And so they go out, they take their ark, and they're going into battle. And then the Philistines steal their ark. They kick <laughs> their asses. They take their ark. You take you take one of these. We, I'm not really changing the subject. We're on the same subject still. Uh, you take one of these big time preachers, right? Yeah. I don't want to mention their names. You know the ones with the mega churches and this and that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're they're up there and they're talking and they're they're on a really good thing, right? And it, maybe even reading right out of the Bible. And all of a sudden they'll go, "Ashala ba la da ba ja ja." In front of the whole congregation, nobody knows what the hell they said. Nobody yeah, it's a show. But they're all cheering. Oh, wow, well, he he spoke in tongues. Let's give him a big round of applause. Yeah, I think the idea that the the, 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 the <laughs> what what you want to do is you you don't want to schismatic. You you don't want to cause offense. You know, inadvertently to be, like you want to be. How do you put it? You want to receive those that are weak in the faith, but not to doubtful disputation. Yeah. Now what that my idea, that my idea of that of that kind of thing is if you're by yourself, right? Yeah. And you don't know what to say when you're praying, and God knows what you need already, right? Yes. Before and if you, you get ask. so filled in your meditation in the Word in the Spirit, yeah, you get so filled up, and stuff comes out of your mouth because you're that, you know. People get hung up. Flowing. This and, is the hole you got. The tree come out of your mouth. Yeah. That's what that means to me, basically. Well, you got your two trees. So you can either go with your rules and regulations and the knowledge of good and what this is good, this is evil, right. this is right, this is wrong. Or you can transcend that whole thing and operate on the principle of life, which is given you through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. 
you know, the college, be spirit, the spirit filled, spirit filled and spirit led. That's a, that's what, you know, correct. Two good things too. <laughs> that's no, no, but that's the, that's the bottom line on it. But right. as Christians, because usually it's, it's born out of good intention, right? The path, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we <laughs> focus on things. The Greek Orthodox church separated from the Russian Orthodox because the Russians would use two fingers, you know, to do their crisscross and the Catholics. And then the uh, and then the the Greeks went this way. I'm sorry, it wasn't the Greek and Russian, but it was the Greek and Roman. The Roman here, and then the Greeks here, or whatever. The ones do too. I forget what you know. I'm neither one. But the point is, historically, that's what they schismed over. That's that not a problem. People just people just messing and twisting and turning and everything to the actual. Word, Armenianism you know. versus Calvinism. Can you lose your salvation? You know, once you got it, you know, what? Oh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. What's that? Uh, right. We observe the Sabbath on Saturday. We observe it on Sunday. Let no man judge you in regards to a holy day. Yeah. You know, Listen, there's, the there's, thing, there's, you know? What about, what about, uh, okay. What did we do? Oh, gosh, I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. Let's do yeah. the last one. The interpretation okay. of tongues. That's the last one. Yeah, the gift. This gift of the Holy Spirit is to interpretate the tongue that was spoken. This can either be for yourself in 1 Corinthians 14, 14, 13 and 14 or for the church. OK, that's interpreting another language. That gift. If somebody stands up and they're speaking in another language in church. You can maybe somebody has that gift or. Or something and can tell what that person said. And that person speaking might not even know, might not even know that language until he stands up and does it. Kind of weird stuff like that, or not really weird stuff. This church I went to, it, uh, it was just, it was, it was a kind of a living water church, I think it was, yeah. or something like that. And in, in Iowa, every time they started their service, before they got into it, the, the path, somebody would jump up and holler this in tongues. But it was the same lady every week, and the same guy interpreted it. Yeah, you need to have. Would just, yeah. But then the pastor would say, "Well, you just witnessed an example of what might happen in here." It was, it was, it was like, okay, now what's going on here? Yeah, uh, it's obviously because of your response to it, it's not as likely, very unlikely. Because what happens? You're one body. Your spirit should bear witness to any spiritual phenomena that's occurring. <laughs> So whether right. it's occultic, whether it's occultic in nature, whether it's satanic in nature, or whether it's of God, you know, you. No, well, I don't know why they had to do that, though. Why not? If it happens, it happens. And then maybe explain it if it happens, you know. Let me let me just put it, you know, <laughs> this way is that I think because people get into form and function and structure. So they go, you know, we've got to have pews. we got to have our chalice. We've got to have uh, this, that, and the other thing. You know, I want a cross at the end. I want Jesus on it. Oh, well, let's get him off it for our church. You know, let's have two crosses, two sticks on it, you know, and then, well, right. we want one, you know. And so it, it, all these things are carnal. They're all yeah. forms. Of, it's, it's, I guess I, I, got really, I got really judgmental for a long time. I couldn't even stay at a church because I find I started finding all these things that really weren't right. Then, you, mean, then that's when you leave and you go, I, uh, yeah. this and we did it. We must have went to five go. or six churches uh, yeah. from Iowa to here when we were in Iowa for a couple of years uh, and to hear five or six churches that were there yeah. for a while. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, uh, there's something not right here. There's something what right what here. you want is spiritual reality. And yeah. and then the, and that should manifest ultimately for the spirit. Are you a nicer person? Are you doing, right. you know, are you kind, gentle, meek? humble you know you want yeah. to have i can't i, can, I can't say that i didn't learn anything from them i did oh, but no, i can say that I, that's that's what got me to the point where i knew something wasn't yeah. right see my my oh. only encouragement my my only exhortation would be that i wouldn't limit it like just because like i give you my testimony so am i am i full of shit richie am i right. you know when i talk about the girl singing i got the bubbly bubblies and then three days later, I experienced by myself the bubbly right. bubblies, the living water that the Bible says I should get because I believed. And that's a manifestation. John 7, 38, 39. It's in there. You can read it. You know, like 
it, it, are some things happen that are outside our can. I went to a, I, I was in a car full of these guys once we're driving around. My friend wanted me to go to this charismatic church thing, right? Okay, so I go, okay, I'm in, let's go. We're all piled in. There's me, the believer, a young Christian believer, just newly kind of minted, and he's got his old buddies with him. So we go in. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, yeah, excuse me for a minute. Yes, Richie. Keep on going. I'm going to listen to it. Okay. So it's, so we're in this church and they're doing their bang and, you know, the Ernest Angelis thing, you know, but heal and all this and people are fainting. And it's just a garbage show, right? It's oh, not God. God. It's, it's complete BS. Right. And right. Uh, these guys see it. They see it. they're through it. And so I'm with these guys, right? And we're in this car and I start talking to them after the thing i go what you saw in there is crap it's fake as long as the day is so you're absolutely right but make no mistake you know there is a god you know and i said and i i don't know what the hell you know i just said in these days anyway i said i'd like to pray for you i want to pray for you guys they say yeah sure whatever so i i grabbed the guy's hand and there were I grabbed the guy and i started praying i said lord if there's a way you can show this thing that you are real in spite of this garbage that we just saw tonight. And the guy goes like this right in front of me, boom, down on the ground, laid out. No. True. And I, where wow. else? I go. And I like, <laughs> I go, that's interesting. So I turned to his buddies. I say, your, your friends passed out here. I said, does he have a history of fainting? They go, no, no, never seen it before. <laughs> they were, they, they, I said, well, folks, I'm telling you that there is a God with power that does stuff. I don't know why he's out there, but he is out there. He, your friends passed out, you know. And uh, so we got That's him to his feet and stuff. I said, has this ever happened to you before? He goes, no. You know, do you know what happened? No. But it was, it was an interesting event. No, that's, so that's how do very, I frame it? Do, is it because? Is it why? I won't go that far. I'll just say that it was an interesting phenomenon. It was something interesting that happened. But right. you don't have to build a whole theology around it. I don't think God right. was asking that out of me. <laughs> right. You know, but it, it but it brought a certain degree of respect into things. Like I talk, I remember at uh, university, I studied a Marxist professor, and he's mocking the Bible belt, you know, Christians and stuff. Right. I go, everything you're saying, I go, professor, I go. Your criticisms are, are the exact thing that Christianity stands against. The, your, your objections are uh, from things, but the real faith, I mean, it, there, there is a rational basis for things independent of, you know, some of the craziness going on with Jerry Falwell or Jimmy Swaggart oh. or oh, Oral my. Roberts or the PTL club, Jim and Tammy and all that. Right, right. Yeah, Nick, it's yeah, got, no, it's, I'm, not, I'm not telling crap. I mean, I'm just saying stuff that I saw. I've seen a lot of stuff, man. Uh, there was an old lady. Her name was Maya Slayer. I never know. I never knew whether she slipped me a Mickey in my coffee or something, or, you know, she could have. I don't know. Right. But she prayed for me. That little old lady grabbed me one day. I'm sitting on the edge of the bed in the bedroom, and she says, I'd like to pray for you. And I go, Okay. And she prays for me, and I was just, but it happened right at that time. That's what was so weird about it. Yeah. She held my hand, prayed, and I'm starting to go like this, and then, boom, I go down. She goes, it's okay. Just rest, rest, relax. We're gonna stay there. I don't you know, know why. I don't know how, and I wasn't planning on any shit like this, and I just went, wow, that is trippy, man. That is, well, you know, that is some, crazy of these, some of these people you mentioned, the Oral Roberts and them, just made a total mockery out of out of religion. I mean, who could who could forget who could forget seeing Oral Roberts' son in yeah. a motorcade of white Cadillacs flying down mm -hmm. these dirt roads in Africa, where he was mm -hmm. going from village to village and making the blind see and the you know the crippled yeah. walk and yeah. well, well hey why don't you just walk out here in the middle of town and do it you know in the united states of america yeah i don't the think that, line, who can who can verify anything over there like that yeah you know? these gifts of the spirit they don't work like a, it's like a sideshow act where i'm i'm right. the healer i've got the gift of healing act. hey come on bring in what you got do uh, you want me to make your leg longer you know hey can you kill right. me right we're so carnal and so earthly right right 
Like, it's like, don't you think this thing's going to last forever? I'm 65. If 20 years, I'll be 85 if I last, if I'm lucky. After right, smoking right. a pack and a half a day, right. until I was 42. <laughs> I you 85. Know. I can't even imagine the way I feel now. Be eight, 20 more years. I'll be six. <laughs> it's only 19 years. I'll be 85. This is that's what I'm saying. This is a, what am I going to feel like at 85? Not very good. Well, you think? Oh, we'll feel, if we're feeling anything, I might, I might feel right. better. I feel 85 but, now. Maybe I'll feel 65 at 85. Well, one of the things, you know, like Richie, would have. <laughs> like in terms of in terms of the reality of God and this sort of thing, like the, the things that impress me is that the the world and the knowledge we're given, they don't know anything. At the end of the right, day, right. they don't know. They in 2015 they finally under, discovered their first quark. They had hypothesized quarks, but they couldn't d d d see one, and they still can't because they're so damn small. But they, you know, by measuring, you know, this, that, and the other thing, you know, you get your quarks, your God particle, you know, the uh, these colliders, atom smashers. And like, yeah. I went to the Dominion Astrophysical Observatory because I knew that hydrogen <laughs> one was the basic element out of which all material reality is consisting, H1. Then in the sun, you get H2, which is helium, right? H1, H2, and then they become, you get carbon and more increasingly as fusion occurs in stars, right? And so oh, I go yeah. to the astronomer there and I go, where does hydrogen come from? And he said, we don't know. It appears to form itself out of nothing. That was the answer I got from the Dominion Astrophysical Observatory in 1976. Huh. Then we've got problems. We got Einstein going to his grave, trying to uh, rectify the disparate properties of quantum mechanics and astrophysics because Newton's laws work well in one frame or the other. But once you try and combine the two, then they have disparate qualities and everything breaks down. That's when they came up with a, a three string theory where they go, if we can hypothesize mathematically 11 dimensions, we can reconcile these disparate qualities. Huh. And that's yeah. absolutely, but you're in a three-dimensional world. You can add a fourth dimension, you want to add time to it. But you, there's no way for us to physically experience 11 dimensions because they don't fit within our space-time continuum. Mm -hmm. And so we take all these things for granted. Well, science says, oh, well, the evolution. I said, where's the monkey come from? Well, the monkey came from, where'd that come from? Well, it came from the primordial soup. Where'd the primordial soup come from? Well, the primordial soup came from, uh, you know, the star, the earth is moving around, it's cooling off. We're getting a, electricity in the air. It's creating all this with ions. It's ionizing the atmosphere. Yeah, okay, well, where did that, where did that come from? And you just keep going back and back and eventually you're left with basic at atomic structures. And then they go, well, it's a big bang. In one instance, boom, everything was there. And now you're getting people hypothesizing. I love oh the, yeah. I love the, what's his name? Uh, uh, what, uh, God, A Brief History of Time. The guy in the wheelchair. The oh, little guy. Yeah. Who, I am a scientist. What's that right, guy? Right, right, right. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I, what anyway, about the was, gap theory? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What about the gap theory? Gap? We got the gap theory, the gap Teacher. theory yeah, okay. between Teacher Genesis gap. one and two. There's supposed to have been, I'm gonna, I don't know how many thousands or millions of years. Oh, in terms of what evolution you mean, in terms of one species to another, that kind of thing. In terms of, uh, there was a gap that's not in the Bible where a whole bunch of things happened before, like, you know, then it gets into Genesis yeah. two. Thanks. So yeah, it's called the gap theory, and I don't believe in it, but there's a lot of people that do. This look is all, this all I, I heard about it in church. and The pastor started talking. There was a, our Bible study, and then he came up and started getting, then he would do his message. But in the Bible study, he brought up the gap theory. And I'm like, okay, now I've heard this before, but I never really knew much about it, and I don't really believe in it, you know? I'm taking well, the Bible. Is, again, are we going by the spirit, that tree of spirit of life, or are we going with the knowledge of good and evil again? 
what you got, we could, we still got a mind and soul. So you can operate on the principle of this is right. This is wrong. This is good. Right. This is bad. You see, that's, it's, that's the gap theory is not, the, the gap theory is not the word of God. It's somebody, it's somebody's theory. Yeah. So how can I believe in it? Thanks, Nick. Yeah. So Stephen yeah, Hawkins is there and he said Hawkins. he didn't like the idea of the singularity because he said, the singularity points the way to God, and I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable with that. He wrote that in a brief history. He would a brief history of time. It's a marvelous book, because he was the guy that hypothesized and was in the foreground of working on black holes, which are is he the one that uh, is he the one that tried his whole life to prove that uh, evolution and stuff, or is that somebody else? Now Richard Dawkins is out Richard there Dawkins, big, okay. leading in evolutionary stuff. He got, drove himself nuts, and his wife was a Christian, and she was just happy and all full of joy and everything. And, and he was just beating himself to death trying to prove, disprove God, and you know, prove that uh, science and evolution and all. Well, this. I, they don't they don't lose any sleep over this stuff. They really don't because they're so smart. If when you're spiritually blind, they. It, you're very happy with however you hypothesize reality because you've created your own reality. He killed a lot of pigeons trying to prove it. I know that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he had all these pigeons he was working with and stuff. I oh, don't know, really? Yeah. Other animals, but yeah, anyway. that wouldn't that would not probably not be Richard <laughs> Dawkins. It would be somebody else. Dawkins is more theoretical. But the point yeah. is, is that. I just people assume a lot of stuff about our world and our reality. Right. That if you really think about it, it certainly leaves us a long, long way. Like I there's one guy I was talking, one of our good friends in the vinyl community, Harry goes, Could God and he Harry's just loving it. He goes, I've got it. I got, you know, could God make a rock so big he couldn't lift it? <laughs> Win for me. God can God, because then if yeah. he can't lift it, he can't do everything. You know, and there is an answer. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing that that we we uh, talk about God and 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 we're believers and all that stuff. Then you have somebody that's on the other side of the fence who's trying to make us believe something else, but wouldn't that they they for some reason can't even consider God. Well, that's various reasons for that because you, you can come up with a thousand one. I just like there's corruption. There's you know these idiot. Television guys making money hand over fist, fleecing <laughs> these idiot sheep that are following them. You know, and yeah. then there's the whole thing. Jesus goes, "I haven't chosen many wise amongst you." What's that? What's that saying? I heard. Don't let me see. Don't believe any anything you hear. Only believe half of what you read, and and you can only believe what you see with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. Don't believe and anything. Even, that, even with your but own that's eyes. Not, that's not really the way it is, but it kind of makes sense a little bit. Don't believe yeah. anything you hear, like the fake news. Don't believe, only believe half of what you read. Like I go online and I'm finding, and I get information sometimes that's not, it ain't right. You know, I run into that quite a bit. You know, the problem is, yeah. it's the same old thing. The way to God is on your knees. It's right. not through powerful. It's not your psychic energy and that you're the great soul power pushing your soul power to the karmic wheel as john lennon and it's, it goes along with these gifts you 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 pray for understanding you can get a, you can pray for these gifts you can pray for discernment you know and then and then i i do that sometimes or not every time but i wish i could remember to do it every time i pray for these things before i even start reading sometimes in the bible yeah and right. sometimes i still don't get it right then but eventually it I, it comes to me eventually you know yeah. Sometimes not right then. But it could be a month later where that that understanding comes to me, you know? It's a it's an ongoing process in our humanity. We know in part, we prophesy in part. We we are fallible to the max, you yeah. know. But what you gotta do is if you have peace in yourself, you know, and, and you're and you're doing okay and you've got that desire and 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 you can receive that love of God on some level in your heart right. to give you peace. It'll self you from, save you from self destructing. Okay, before yeah. we before we sign off, I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 because this is what it's all about. It's Paul talking, and he says, uh, "Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, and which you stand." 
Mm -hmm. And number two says, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered you first of all that which I also received. I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried, put away buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then it goes on and says, number five, and he was seen by Cephas or Cephas and then by the disciples. And after that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. Hmm. All those eyewitnesses seen him raised from the dead. And you can't, it, it's hard to believe that they, now they pass this stuff down generation after generation in, in their families and everything else. This happened, you know. We believe that, yeah. And we believe this happened. We That's, believe these things to be true. Right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on tonight. It was okay. great. I think yeah, we had yeah, a I, I fantastic want to thank you show. For, for having me on. I do appreciate it. We had a fantastic it. show. And I, I, I'm sorry, Rachel, didn't mean to interrupt you. No. But, uh, I really enjoyed it. And, and I really appreciate you helping out because, you know, it's, it's nice to have guests because we all have different ideas and views and, and then we can put them all together and, and it's, it's, it's nice. And it, it makes me feel good. You know, it you really work, does work it all, work it all out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, it, yeah. yeah. Everybody does have different views. That's, that's a fact. Yeah. And, and Richie, remind me again, when did, uh, when did you become a Christian? When did this all, um, you know, it was, become it, more real well, for you? I, I st my wife actually got me, into it. She was a Christian long before I was, but she wasn't yeah. really practicing when we met. And then years went by and, and we, we had to do something because we were not heading in the right direction, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we, we tightened it up and we went to Iowa to get away from everything. And we, she knew she lived there before and she knew a couple of pastors there that were married and they had a church when she was there, but they didn't have one when we got there and we started hanging out with them and doing Bible studies and going to church with them. And then they decided they wanted to open a church again. So we helped them open a four square. Okay. Church. Yeah. No, I know. And, the four and we started doing that. And I, that's what I started getting into it. And I, I was like a 59 years old. So, uh, so what year would that have been ballpark? It was, well, it was what year? Yeah. Ballpark. Well, six years ago. Oh, okay. Six yeah. and a half years ago or seven years ago. Uh, about a week before I turned 60, I had an experience. I mean, an experience that I recognized. Mm -hmm. I probably had tons of signs and, and, and things happening that God was doing, but <coughs> this is the one that really hit me. I was sitting in the living room. Everybody else was asleep. It was early one morning and I was, I was in there thinking and sweating the th same thing that has been happening my whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. be letting people walk on me, always being nice, no matter what anybody ever did or said about me and never could never could come back at him and be mean and angry. And God came inside me. He said, stop. Stop doing that. Stop feeling that way. This is the way you are. And it's a good thing. Yeah. That, acceptance of your own self. Yeah. Do you stay that way? He said, I mean, it's not like Richard and reverb and stuff like that, but it came into me that, that experience. And, and, and I went, wow. Okay. I'm fine. Then, you know, I guess I'm fine. I wrote it down. I can't find the notebook. I wrote it down in. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, a powerful, that's a powerful experience. Yeah, it was powerful. It just, oh, it yeah. just uh, was unbelievable. That's just what I needed after all those years of feeling that way, not being able to be angry, angry and mean to people. Yeah, I have no trouble with that. I've, I thought there was something definitely. Yeah, I thought a lot of people don't. I, yeah. You know, like like I'm not the first one that when you walk in the door and say, hey, man, you're getting fat, you know, something like that. Something ridiculous like that. <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. I didn't want, so I took a lot of, you know what, and ate a lot of crow and everything yeah. else my whole entire life. When I, when I got mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good mean. 
it was it was like disgusting, you know. Yeah. So I couldn't do mean and angry very well, and I always thought I, there was something wrong with me because of that, because of letting things go by. Well, you were, you were always you always had a real happy go lucky kind of personality, you know. It was like every, yeah. you never it see you it appeared outwardly you never let anything bother you, you know. Oh, but there inside it, it was just churning for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about you, do rice? Does rice do you blow up? Does rice blow up, or do you? Are you cool? Rice is Rice is an Henri son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's changed well, a lot. though. he's changed a lot. He's mellowed <laughs> definitely in in a good way. Well, you know, as as brothers, there was always that you know, especially three years apart. You know, a different yeah. set of friends. And, uh, you know, and Rich would always try to pester me. And <laughs> I don't know. We, we had our we had our issues in a way. He really we wasn't always, that bad. He really wasn't that bad. Of a we, brother, we were always, we were always yeah. family. It's a blessing that you guys are still friends and brothers, you know, and to be alive. You know, as we're getting older and all that, it's a great thing to have your brother with you. Well, well you know, thank you, Rachel. You know, you, you asked me, what about you, Royce, after hearing Richie's story? Of, yeah. Like, like kind of a big turnaround. Well, I, I never really had anything like that. I mean, I always just, I mean, for the longest time, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I sowed my wild oats and did things I shouldn't have done in my youth, you know, and by the time I was married, I was just, I was so mellowed out at that point. And my entire focus was, you know, my family, my wife and my family and getting ahead in life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I didn't have, there was no, that, that maybe that was the big event in my life finally getting married and uh, finding that to be the important, important thing in life was my family. But there was not, I, I mean, I didn't, you know, it's not like I got 60 years old like Rich did and finally did some big turnaround in this life. I felt like as long as, almost as long as I can remember in my adult life, I was just trying to do the right thing, you know? Yeah, and, right. um, and that's good. That's good too. You know, I, I treated people, you know, treated people with respect, kindness and, uh, mm -hmm try to get along with everybody and like Richie tried to get along with everybody. And, um, I just tried to do the right thing for, for a long time now. I mean, like I said, when I was a teenager, you may have had some experience raising and stuff like that. It was a different story, but, um, that was, that was my youth too, you know? Yeah. But after that, after that happened to me and even, even now I've, I've, I'm seeing all these things that God was doing my whole life, but didn't know it. Didn't know. Yeah. I've asked for help and got it many yeah. times. And, uh, and I feel like I have I really believe that it was God that did it, you know? So it's really weird. And then I've been helped out of a few jams. Yeah. And I just by before I even believed in, in Jesus, yeah. you know, what? and all I've ever I've asked, seen asked them all for, now, you know, all I've ever asked for it or prayed for when I was, you know, in my lowest, whether it was, uh, uh, you know, in a really bad way financially, the economy was bad and things, right. everything was kind of going away and things like that. The only thing I ever asked, I never asked for wealth. I never asked for money. I never asked for a new car or truck. All I ever asked for is help me to stay healthy and I'll do the rest. Right. Yeah. How about hair? I've asked for hair a few times. <laughs> my hair to grow back. <laughs> it hasn't happened. I think that's just another part of maturity as you get older. I've <laughs> I, I, I found a way to accept that. You know. Yeah. Like here's here's another phase, right? Okay. Now now I'm 66 years old. I don't care about it no more. Mm. You know. I mean, I don't want to be you know totally bald, but it it, it probably vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, Ricky, I'm going to hang around after uh, and I'll show you how to don't close out the YouTube okay. or anything. Keep that okay. going and then I'll show how to work the wrenches and everything. Okay. Uh, so what, how do I do this? I just end the broadcast and just, and don't do anything else or what do I do? Yeah. You just say thanks to Nick Pan Fantasy and Bobby. Yeah, yeah, and Nick, thanks maybe lot, I hope, okay, I, hope I'm gonna say, I hope this wasn't too boring for you. And I don't know if Bobby Simmons, you saw Bobby Simmons came in the chat, didn't you? That's great. I know he says, "Hey, Richie, Bobby Simmons here. How, you know, how are all, you?" All, he grew up. He grew I had up him on, our, on the street for a while. He grew up on our on our street. Yeah. Right. So yeah, keep the uh, YouTube uh, stream part open, but end it here, and uh, we'll go. Okay. There. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye, everybody. Thanks, okay. Nick. And we're in the six yeah, in the morning, Nick. Bobby, if you're still there.
you know, I might I might hang out for just another minute and see, you know, okay, how this okay. whole rest works. Goodbye, yeah, everybody. We're... Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm gonna end. End. Everybody, hands up. <laughs> you guys are... <laughs>